What's going on guys? My name is Fernando Herrera and today we're going to be talking about a topic very interesting, very requested by a lot of people and you heard it by the title. It's how to import new tires into the US. Um, I'm sure you could use this actually. This process can be used to import any sort of thing. I've actually used it to import tires and I've used it to import supplies. So shop supplies like weights, patches, lug nuts, so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna be doing a lot of editing in this video. It's really gonna be just me talking briefly. It's gonna try to be, uh, try to making it like a short video, uh, but I'm gonna give you guys, uh, so I'm gonna like share my screen so you guys can see my notes and I'll just talk about them and that's it, right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and start. Before we continue though, please help me by smashing that like button, subscribe if you like this sort of content because on Wednesdays, I share my tips on how I'm getting closer to that $1 million net worth and importing tires to then sell them locally here in the US is one way I'm getting there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start. All right guys, let's go ahead and begin. So you got all my notes here. You can definitely feel free and just read them, pause the video, read them and then take off. Uh, but I wanna go over briefly just kind of like which, uh, what everything means here. So if you are wanting to import tires, let's say you have a shop, you wanna open a shop, you wanna make a warehouse, um, you are curious just in how do I import tires? Why? Because I could get a better price and because probably mainly it's just the price, you know, and certain product. Um, so if you're wholesaling tires, for example, in my case, when I wholesale tires, if I'm the only one importing this brand in my city, then I know that I control this specific product line, right? So that sometimes can be beneficial. You know, you could kind of give warranty specifically to this brand uh, and you can kind of get creative with this. But overall, let's just go ahead and talk about the importing process. So there's two ways you can actually do this. Uh, but right now I'm gonna talk um, both ways, but briefly the, the fastest and easiest way to import tires is when you import tires, you have to tell your supplier that if they accept a DDP terms, and, and we have that term right here. So DDP terms means door to door uh, pricing. And so in this pricing model, they price in the import fees, the shipping, pretty much they quote you for everything. And then they just tell you, look, this is the price um, that you're gonna pay in order for you to get this product to your door. That's why it's called door to door. So from our door to your door. And so that's normally the easiest way, but it's more expensive, obviously, because you know they're gonna mark up on the shipping, they're gonna maybe earn a little bit on the port forwarder, then, uh, you know, so it eventually gets a little more expensive because they're doing some work on their end. Now, uh, it is easy if you're just starting to just go DDP. Uh, sometimes it's still worth it, it's a lot cheaper, but, you know, just keep that in mind. A lot of suppliers out there will actually offer FOB. And what that means is uh, freight on board or something like that. I, I forgot, I, I remember, but it's just FOB. And long story short is that you're responsible for the product from the factory, right? So sometimes the manufacturer, in this case, I'm just gonna focus on tires. The, the tire manufacturer, the tire factory, might be kind enough to sell you to port so they'll send the tires or your container over to a port and then you'll make sure that you have your you know, shipping carrier, bring it over to the US, have a forwarder port, uh, uh, port forwarder and then ship it over to your warehouse, wherever in the US it is. But the, the tire manufacturer makes tires, right? And so they're gonna, they have a whole bunch of tires. You're buying one container. Normally it's a 40 inch or 40 foot container. Uh, because if you buy something smaller, the pricing of shipping is going to be around the same. So might as well get something, you know, bigger. And so then once they load your container, your container is ready to go. You typically need, like I said, you still need a local shipping company that's going to take it from the factory to the port. And so that's one shipping carrier that you need if you're doing FOB. Once it reaches out to the port, you're going to work with a port forwarder. And what that means is that this is a company or a guy, uh, typically a guy that works in a company, and he will help you uh, make sure that the port, your container gets inside a shipping vessel or a container, like a boat, and then ships it over to the US 
And then once it arrives to the U.S., it will, he will help you or she will help you clear customs, pay your duties, like, you know, if you have to pay any import taxes, and then clear it, you know, so that way another shipping company, that's the second shipping company that you'll need, or, or technically the third one, because you already used one in the manufacturer's country to send it to a port. You used another shipping company to for the boat, you know, the sea shipping, and then you'll use a third company for local delivery, you know, local freight. And that would be from the port once it's cleared from customs to your warehouse or to your tire shop. So once you've done this, the port forwarder should help you with that. And so now it's very important. It sounds easy, guys. It's actually super simple. And that's it. I mean, in a nutshell, that's it. That's how you import tires to the US. Where it gets complicated is that port forwarders normally don't know uh, everything about your industry. And so if they're forwarding all sorts of things, uh, you know, you might be ending up losing your merchandise or paying a lot of taxes that at the end it actually ends up being more expensive than you buying the product locally. And the reason I say that is because, for example, if you buy tires from China, right now the tariffs on those uh, containers for taxes, for freight, like just taxes in general, uh, they're extremely expensive. And so it really depends on the type of tire, uh, whether it's a passenger, light truck, commercial tire, what type of factory, you know, different factories, even though they all come from China or from one country or from Thailand or from whatever, each different factory has their own unique uh, tariff. And so port forwarders have to be aware of all these things because if you get a port forwarder that doesn't know what's going on, you're going to ship your container. It's going to arrive here in the U.S. and suddenly they're going to tell you, hey, you owe us, I don't know, thousands of dollars that you weren't expecting. And then now you have a $50,000 container that if you don't pay them, you're going to lose them. And so you don't want to be in that spot because normally the things to keep in mind is that it's a very time sensitive issue. So whenever your container arrives to the port, you only have certain days to clear it from customs. And if you don't clear it from customs, they'll actually start charging you like fines. And so again, it could get very expensive very quick to the point where your container is almost useless because you owe a lot more in fines and you might as well just kind of let it go. Thankfully for me, I've never lost a container. I've only imported FOB once and uh, when it comes to tires, and we have imported a lot more FOB when it comes to supplies because supplies is a little bit less. You know, if you wanna maybe get some practice like I did, maybe start with a smaller package instead of a big container. I started with pallets. Uh, and so I would just, you know, inside a container that would be my pallet. And I would have a whole bunch of shop supplies like wheel weights, adhesive weights, patches, uh, valve stems, all that sort of stuff and then we would wholesale it here in Las Vegas. But that's how I started to kind of get experience with FOB. At the end, honestly, I don't do it anymore because it's just like my port forwarder was okay, but it was just too much work. You know, I had to just be on them and it was constant like calling and messaging and all at the end, you only save like maybe 300, 400 bucks. Um, you know, maybe if I was doing a full container, I would be saving, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven thousand $7,000. So that would be, uh, much more motivating for me, but when it's like 300 400 bucks, I was like, uh, you know what kind of it's not worth it And then with tires we normally get a pretty good deal with DDP So normally we're kind of satisfied just paying door-to-door -door. We understand that people have to make some money because they're doing that work, you know in terms of or, or coordinating everything So we're just willing to say hey, you know what if we got to pay a thousand dollars more two thousand uh, but you know, it's cost of doing business and less work for us less headache because at the end of the day we are not in the importing tire business, right? If you got to deal with your brick and mortar stores, with your business operation, the last thing you want to do or have is a call from the port forwarder saying that you're going to get billed $500 for a container that you have no idea how you're going to clear. So that's just my advice. But again, a lot of people have been asking me how to import tires from, uh, you know, from outside the U.S. That's how you do it. If you had to pick a factory right now as of 2022, I would recommend you focus on countries like Vietnam, uh, Turkey, and there's another one that I'm missing here because before it was China, obviously, but now tariffs went too high, so that kind of made no sense. You know, you're paying more in tariffs than what the tire is actually worth. 
and then so you know don't import from china because of the tariffs not because they're bad product they're actually really good products but you know just the tariffs makes no sense uh, then for a couple of years it was thailand thailand was doing really good tires and a lot of uh, companies were buying from thailand um, but now i believe tariffs kind of kicked in in there for thailand and korea so i would say right now vietnam indonesia and turkey are probably one of the most uh, common most popular places to import tires um, you pretty much got to find a uh, supplier right so that's kind of easy um, especially if you come to vegas on sema uh, for the annual uh, convention for you know cars and all that stuff you can easily find a whole bunch of suppliers but if you're interested in also importing tires or buying tires container load well you can always reach out to me and i'll try to maybe give you some point of contacts or maybe even give you pricing ddp because we do sell container loads as well anywhere in the u.s but again let me just read and see if i have any tips here so made in factory loaded into a container 40 foot shipped from factory to port transferred to the u.s uh you know typically long beach for us that's a port that we get most of our containers from port forwarder helps clear customs pay taxes other fees you do have to rent a chassis that's something i didn't mention a chassis is just like a steel bracket that allows the container to be mounted on a steel bracket with like tires and then the shipping company or the freight company uh, will pull the chassis with your container and then the port forwarder i believe uh, i don't know who honestly takes the chassis back but because uh, again remember i i've only did, did it once and i remember i, I want to say the shipping company the shipping, the local shipping shipping company that we used was the one that rented the chassis for us and then took it back once it was done. And so, uh, let's see, local ship, shipping company ships your container, so that's fine. And then the team you need, uh, they can make, your lose, you make you lose money. So obviously you need a tire manufacturer, you need a shipping company, an exporting country, a freight company uh, for country to country transportation over the boat, a uh, shipping company over uh, once local in the U.S., freight forwarder um, or port forwarder, whatever you want to call it. And then, like I said, other alternatives more simply to just import tires would be uh, DDP terms. And then tips, these are just some tips. Uh, use tire manufacturers to give you suggested uh, shipping company. So if you're working with the tire manufacturer already, sometimes they might be able to give you some shipping companies that they already use. So, you know, just ask them like, hey, would you happen to have a shipping company I could use? here domestically in the US and over there, you know, and over the sea. And then you could give this shipping company to your port forwarder and sometimes they can make it work. Sometimes your port forwarder might have those connections and that might just work better. So just make sure to kind of haggle around there. And then ask in advance um, to only work with a recommended port forwarder. If you don't know anyone, well, you're just gonna have to guess, but just be very careful, you know, because if your port forwarder sucks, then <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be a very bad experience for you. And then ask in advance how much to import, uh, uh, how much to expect in tax. This is very important. Port forwarders should be able to calculate. It's not gonna be exact, but they should be able to give you an estimate. The tire manufacturer as well could help you, but mostly it's gonna be your port forwarder's job in telling you, look, you should expect to pay this amount in taxes. Make sure you know how to pay them, when to pay them, so that your container is cleared because I believe you should be doing all this when the boat or when the container's on, on its way. So that way when it's here, it's like, it's everything's done, everything's paid for, we're ready to go. Um, when getting your container, be ready to unload in two hours. So shipping or, or freight companies will normally bring your container down to your shop. They will open that container and they'll say, you have two hours, any hour uh, extra, we're gonna bill you because you know our truck driver's just sitting here. So sometimes they're kind and flexible, but just be ready, have some people ready to unload, have the space ready, you know, don't be thinking that you have like two days to unload. Um, and then at the end, you are responsible for any extended days costs um, at port. So I kind of spoke about that, but you know, if um, you, your container's not cleared at a certain time, you will be responsible for uh, those fees, right? So you wanna make sure that your container's in and out quick port forwarder is extremely important i cannot stress that enough um buying local uh you know so i think that's it um 
yeah, I mean, that's pretty simple. A kind of long video though, guys. I thought it was gonna be a little shorter. But if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, we normally do just DDP terms, but we can also uh, set up DDB factory direct to you. Or if you want just any manufacturer that we're currently working with, feel free to email me and I'll be more than happy to share that info. But um, again, thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you guys stay safe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.